Hi guys, um, I'm not sure what's up with my voice today. It's extremely, extremely rough. I've tried to begin this video 10 times and um, it's just ended up me sounding like Gollum, like worse than Gollum. Uh, so I've got a cup of water here. Even though it says coffee, there's only water in here because I, I really need it to smooth my throat. <laughs> I'm not sure why, I'm not sick. Although it is raining right now. You might be able to hear the rain. I'm right next to uh, the large window. So, <clears throat> please excuse my voice. Uh, so this will be a craft doll project plan update. Um, if you remember my last update video, I planned on doing a lot of crafts, uh, making a number of props for this guy, but I have not actually shared what those props are. Of course, if you um, follow me on Instagram, you might have seen some photos of a few of the items I've made and some stuff I've been working on. So here's Kranksky and Adley. Kranksky is my Soldo Vito body with a, I guess I would call it fake head. Um, pardon me, just gonna move that. Fake head, I say that because it's a rubber ball with uh, this gas mask that I made. I placed it on top of the rubber ball, so the rubber ball sits on top of an S hook. Um, then Adley is my with doll Kathy head in real UV resin on a long sole quarter scale body, their third version. Um, I have a prop that I made, uh, I'll show you its size compared to these two since she's more of a typical slim mini size and he's that sort of 50 centimeter range doll. But most of my props were made for him and one of them you can see here he's wearing, which is his warden hat. The pictures I put on Instagram, it's actually gray but I painted it black, and I'll oops, show you here, painted it black, and I added some hardware here at the top, and then there's a pin here at the side, and another pin right here. And then I tried to, like, distress it by adding some flecks of gray around it and um, rubbing it all over. And then in the silver paint, I painted the W at the front. I consider this the front, although it, it probably could be interchangeable. And here at the back, I've got no evil, which you'll see is a common theme um, in all the props I've made for Kranksky. And this silver um, edging all around the brim. And then all of that is distressed as well. I think I might want to take... Um, some sort of tool and just start actually doing real scratches and try uh, carving some wear and tear around it just to... I, I don't think the the paint that I buffed into it, I don't think it looks like scratches. I really want it to look like it's been through a war essentially. Um, so that's the warden hat I've made for Kranksky. Um, I'll put this down now because I just want to mention I did also do some improvements to his head. Oh, his, looks crooked. I did some improvements to his head. I actually, when I looked at his side profile before, it was sitting too high. Uh, it made his proportions look strange and then the rubber ball was making a weird shape at the back of his head. So I had to like do some modifications to the rubber ball itself um, and I had to fix the way it sat on the S hook. And then if I was successful, um, I hope I was successful, I, I might have put a little photo story introduction to this video and um, you would see he's wearing a second mask under the gas mask which is the definition of paranoid in my opinion so I had to create that second mask um, just for that reason alone but I, I also created it because it helped me um, create a better silhouette for the shape for the side profile as well as it'll help me make future masks for him. That that underlay mask, uh, that's what I'm calling it. That underlay mask will help me shape more masks because my plans are to make more gas masks for him and other types of like masks to hide his identity. He has a number of them, I believe. Um, so I'm gonna maybe do another crafting month for him and focus on those masks probably. So. Here's the next item, which is a megaphone, like the non-electric version. 
Um, so you just you speak into this hole, the smaller one, and then it amplifies coming out the larger one. It's got that conical shape. And this is going to sound very strange, but this was the hardest prop for me to make, was trying to get this conical shape. My math is not good. I will be the first to admit that I did not inherit any mathematical skills from my parents at all, which growing up that really, when I was a kid, that really, um, uh, I think, perplexed my parents that I think only my younger sister has like an aptitude for math, but me and my twin sister were not very mathematically savvy, or it's not like one of our strong suits. I would definitely say it's not one of our strong suits. So, yep, it's black as well. Um, I think black and silver is his kind of color, and then there's like splashes of gold on his gas mask. There's no evil here on the side. There's a little handle for him to hold it. And the inside. And then there's no evil taped on the inside as well. So when he's yelling in your face, you can see that right through the cone. So that's another one of his props. And the third prop, which is the biggest prop, and it was actually the first one I constructed, is right here. I can roll it over. lower this a little bit. Here's the first item actually that I did before anything else was this pin board. Pin board slash chuck board slash wheeling slash flipping. I'm not really sure what to call this but uh, I really wanted, I really had been wanting to do this whole conspiracy board look for him ever since I decided I was going to make that head for the veto body. I really really wanted to make this type of prop. At first I thought I was just going to make a smaller board, like not even not even this large, maybe half the size, and then it would just be um, hanging on a wall, and then I would take pictures of him standing by that wall. I honestly have no, not really sure why I really wanted to do like this whole entire um, frame. Like you can see here, it's it's got the wheels, it's got the supporting frame, it does flip. It does flip over because there's a chalkboard on the other side. Yeah, I'm really surprised actually that I wanted to do the whole thing. But then once I started finding pictures online of the vintage school um, and university chalkboards that were on wheels, they were just really inspiring. But then also with what Kranksky's been putting on his particular board, just not not specifically what I've got here because this is kind of different but he would have like all these articles of like all the bad stuff that's happened in the city and it would be like a sign that obviously while Ar everyone knows Arterdam is not really a crime-free safe place to be it's just something is going on and everything is connected like it just has that feeling particularly for this though this certain layout I'm showing I just place this as like a this is how I'm going to be um, telling his story or his various lines of stories because once I do uh, Mr. Kranksky's character video, which will probably be soon, maybe in a week or two, I'll be using this board and all these lines of thought, which is all this string, is how I'm going to be telling his story. That's why there's labels like the artist, the missing, the war, the activist, who is Kranksky. It's going to be my way of uh, just telling you all about him. I might even continue doing some improvements to the layout of it and I'll be doing like continuously different layouts and compositions on this board as time goes on and I'll probably share that with you each time. But just to show you this board, I'm gonna have to <laughs> make my way around here. Um, so let's see here. So you saw the wheels at the bottom and it does spin, or not spin, it does roll. And I, I really wanted this to work, but it's not really working as well as I would like. So the wheels are like coasters, they can turn, but um, I, I'm not sure, I think on coasters the item on top of them have to be heavy to be engaged so that they, the wheels don't like to do the 360 when they're on the ground. They can easily spin in the air, but on the ground. Um, I think the weight of the board is too light for that to happen. 
so it has a hard time wanting to turn um, but you know it was a try it, it almost worked but at least at least it does some action of rolling and here at the bottom I've got these coffee stirrers which are currently pulled down there's four of them so two on both sides and when I lift that up you lift them up so you can spin it oops I'm hitting the wall <laughs> let's do this and now it's a chalkboard of course it's not an actual chalkboard I've just painted it black and acrylic and you can see I've only done one coat there's the um, cardboard uh, streaks all over I do need to buy some chalkboard paint and also put like some sort of smooth layer you can see I accidentally punctured the cardboard which is the the backing of my cork board so I'll be placing something smooth like some sort of surface and then painting that with chalkboard paint maybe not anytime soon but um, hopefully in the future and as you can see I've got like here on the frame there's some graffiti I'll, I'll probably point that out as well in the story video um, I painted this wood it used to be basswood the frame was different it wasn't bass frame was hard to stain in distress because it's actually MDF um, particle it's you know particle board uh, covered in a paper veneer that looks like wood grain but it's actually kind of plasticky so I tried to stain it and the stain would just like sit on top of the paper and just start to make globs and it wasn't staining it wouldn't dry it it was the bane of my existence at the time um, I finally distressed it using some alcohol inks but yeah I think it turned out pretty well so let's put this back so I am excited though, once I can put some chalkboard paint, I can start um, doodling. Maybe this is where he does his graffiti design ideas. He d does it on the chalkboard side and then on this side, the corkboard side is all his plans or his research for like all the political, uh, all his political activities that he watches around the city. I'll go more into depth of the content of his board when I do this character video. But one thing I would like to point out when this video is going on 13 or uh, 14 minutes, I would like to point out the size of it. So you can see there's Adley. Let me just bring it a little closer. There's Adley. Um, this is her standing in front of it. So I would say it's a good size for Adley, who is a typical slim, slim mini type of BJD. So if she was an adult, I think this would be a good height. But my problem is Adley is a child, and the real adult are the 50 centimeter dolls, which you can see here. Here's Mr. Kransky. Make him stand with his feet. I'll back this up and you can see the top of his head is definitely above the board. So there are reasons why I made the board smaller and then I, my reasoning in the story why it's smaller it sort of came afterwards. So when I was thinking of constructing the board, move badly to the side here, when I was thinking of constructing the board um, I wanted to use materials that I already had in my craft room. So that consisted of these wooden dowels, these square dowels, and these pieces of trim. They're used for doll houses, and I wanted to use it as the base and ceiling trims if I ever made a diorama box to put all my furniture in. But then I thought, let me use the wood pieces for something else. So when I was thinking of the dimensions for this board, I couldn't, I thought I couldn't raise it or make the board longer or taller or raise it higher because the members of the pieces I already had in existence to create the frame are too thin for that. They would need to thicken up in order to be structurally supportive of a larger and heavier board. 
especially if I wanted it to be one that was like this one that can flip and rotate. So with that in mind, I made it smaller. And so yes, it does look, he does tower over the board itself. But my reasoning is that's why I've got that chalkboard on the other side is because it's a chalkboard. Oops, sorry. It's a chalkboard used from a elementary school for young children. So maybe that's why it was on the smaller side is because it was meant to be at the height level that was easier for children to access and write on it. So that's my thinking. And then Kranksky found this old beaten up chalkboard in the trash. Um, it's probably been retired and then he fixed it up and now he uses it in his own um, hidden secret hideaway. That's, <laughs> that's my reasoning. Okay, so that is Kranksky's updates. So like I said, I would like to make more masks for him in the future. This camera is not wanting to stay still. I guess that's fine. And we can go on to some smaller crafts, I guess. I've actually been working on some stuff for Milton's desk. Like this. I don't know why. I saw the... When I was working on this board, I saw my little post-it notes and I thought, they look really empty on Milton's desk. I think they need like something to uh, hold it. And then I folded and cut off this filigree pieces and put them together to make a little stand for his table. So it just sits there and there's a pen right there. And then I wanted to make improvements to the pen holder that I had for him. So I made this little, it's more filigree. Here's some earring backings that are like the feet of it. And then two, I guess like ink wells so that like you can store your pen and then it gets refilled with ink and then you can write with it. That also sits possibly next to the uh, post-it note holder. So those are just some quick things for Milton's desk. Uh, I did make this little one for a test piece. It's just where the pens lie flat on it, like a tray. Last thing that I made, um, actually yesterday, I was playing around with some clay. And actually, it's pretty rough and I got really impatient, so I already did bake it, so it is, it's hard. This is my ring doll cane, K-A-N-E, I believe. It's the gift head I received when I had purchased my Ringdoll K, the limited edition. So, I would not recommend if um, sculpting on top of some sort of like base that you need to follow, don't use the same color because I got really lost at times when I was doing like the hairline and the edges white on white. I really strained my eyes trying to like see, to like really see the details in this. But yeah, so this is my second attempt at sculpting hair. This time I used a white clay. And I wanted the hair to be like larger gestures, like the segments are larger and more stylized. The other wig that I tried in the other clay, it was also pretty stylized, but when I say smaller gestures, the strands were closer together. These are like um, thicker pieces put together. So I had less sculpting to do, but at the same time I did leave it pretty rough, I'll admit. I also think I made the hair too high, like if you see the front profile. I think I should have stopped, I shouldn't have piled it on so high, it should have actually ended right about there. But I really wanted to concentrate on the back, because before on the other wig I did not give myself the chance to sculpt the back of the hair. This turned out pretty rough though anyway, so... I think he does look uh, pretty decent in this hair. It's really interesting. So my plans are, this coming month, now that uh, I'm at this topic about hair, next month is going to be hair month, I, I suppose, like salon. Everyone's going to get their hair done. Mostly the serenade boys, like Milton, uh, Oh, not, not Milton. Um, Saren and Kane. Although Milton will get his hair done as well. What, for Milton, that's why I'm doing these experiments with the sculpted hair, is because that will be for Milton. I have not tried 
since the first one, this is on a larger head, um, I will be trying it on a smaller head here. Hopefully it'll go well. So I'm giving myself time to do that. So, and as you can see, I've actually had to um, remove Milton's face up. I'm, I'm pretty excited to redo it, but just because when I'm sculpting, I would prefer not to have to worry about what, what's happening to his face up. So I, I wiped that. For Saren and Kane, <clears throat> I finally bought some yarn, and here's one of them. Kane's is pretty much the same color of the hair he has now, but for Saren, I'm really excited about this one. Um, so right now he's got like a dark brown color. Uh, the wig is from Moodoll, I believe, but I'm really excited to make him my own homemade wig. And this yarn is... Lion Brand Yarns, Hometown USA, El Paso Autumn. And I just really love these colors, and I've already tried brushing and straightening out some strands. Here are the brushed out ones. I've already begun straightening some pieces and then collecting them in preparation for making the, the, the yarn wig. Before Leroy moves completely out of the way, <laughs> I actually chose this yarn because deep in my heart of hearts, I would have liked if I could pick a hair color for Saren that matched Leroy's. This color right up here on the top of his head, this sort of um, strawberry blonde light auburn color, and then this <laughs> the beautiful hair that Yorkies have, that sort of um, silvery black color. Uh, uh, this doesn't really do it 100%, but I still think this is a very beautiful color. So. Maybe I'll make a wig for Leroy too. Right, Leroy? What do you think of this? No? Okay. <laughs> so I will be doing Saren's wig, and I will be doing a wig for Kane, hopefully. And I'm pretty happy with Lance's neon orange wig. That will, that will be staying for now. I'll probably end up buying the proper hair color for him at some very later date. So... That's what this is for. I'm very excited. So I will be working on both hard wigs, sculpted wigs, and yarn wigs for next month. I am also planning to not stress out about other crafts. I'm hoping it's just going to be nothing but wigs. And I'll be taking um, breaks in between wigs to just focus on non-doll things. You know, get other stuff done. But I am pretty excited for the hair, you know. So yeah. Those were my updates. I do want to remind everyone I am going to be posting up my first tutorial. It's already done. It's waiting in the queue. It'll be put up on the first Tuesday of June. And that's the magnifying glass tutorial. Thanks to everyone that did my sort of like... Se I call it secret giveaway because I'm not very vocal about it. It's like a thank you to everyone that just follows me, you know, so far. So yeah. Hopefully, character video for Kransky will be the tutorial video on the first Tuesday of June. And I will see you guys then. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.